Okay, so our recording is in progress. Um, so today we're going to talk about ideas to improve the world, specifically using Gen AI in the fintech world. Um, we all know how fintech is now very, um, it's very hot in the market and um, so many companies are using it and a lot of people, it's kind of proven to be one of the most profitable businesses in the world currently. So aside from just um, coming up with ideas to improve the world, we're also going to look at um, the thinking process that goes throughout from an idea to implementation, but what exactly do you need to know and understand? Uh, when you have an idea and you want to make it to um, come into place. And then also, we are going to also look at some of the ways, what makes a good idea? Um, how can you make your idea or project to be very sustainable? And also, what exactly do we mean when we say um, sustainability of an idea? And yeah all those things. So yeah, welcome. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, uh, so yeah, we can can go ahead. I'm just looking for the slides. Okay, so um, one of the things we're going to look at is um, the ideation process. And this basically just means um, what exactly do you need to think about uh, from conceiving the idea that you want into um, actually building it up and also maintaining it and evaluating it once you've already deployed it. So uh, for this week's exercise, we're going to just um, give you a small exercise to think about um, some of the ideas that you've always had. And um, this could be in terms of if you're, if you're, start, if you're, if you're thinking about entrepreneurship or if you're thinking about um, if you have an idea that you want, that you feel can change the world in a way, um, how exactly do you go from just an idea to actually executing it? And uh, yeah, there are different ways. So we have the first ideation process. So some of you already have some good ideas with you, some don't, but it's we're hoping this guideline is going to like help you um, come up with a good idea if you don't. Um, so one of the first things to do is to uh, define the problem. So there's never really an idea or a solution that comes without without it solving a problem, unless it's really just seizing an opportunity. For example, Gen AI brings up a lot of opportunities, so it's going to phase out the old technologies. There is still um, one of the major things. Uh, so if you're, if, you, if you're coming up with a solution that doesn't really solve a problem, then it's it, it's not really a good idea. So you have to do a lot of research, look at 
And for you to actually get this really good ideas, you have to be in places or in situations where um, where the problem is actually at. So for example, if you're thinking about creating a, a Gen AI platform for maybe for the lawyers to use, um, yeah, so there are this Gen AI platforms that have come for the lawyers to use. So if you haven't really been in the field of law, it's going to be really hard for you to formulate the problem that lawyers are actually facing for you to solve a solution. So you have to be really involved in the problem. If you know, and one of the good things uh, with it is you need to have like a good data source to tell you that this problem is not just happening with two or three people that you know of. So for a good problem, it has to be, it has to be um, something that a lot of people are experiencing. You want your idea to be very scalable, so that means it should grow. So if it only affects one or two people, is it really worth building a uh, something like something that costs you a lot of money for you to just save two people. Um, if you want it for profit, then I don't think it's it's, it's the right way to go about it. Um, but yeah, so you have to really find a problem that affects any everyone, not everyone really, but a huge percentage of the population. It could be in a very specific niche. It could be in FinTech, you've noticed, uh, the credit scoring platforms are not so uh, good or they have a certain flaw and you've actually proved or you have the right data source. It could be from internal, from data from internal from the banks or other places. Um, so without you having the right data source to actually prove that this credit scoring algorithm is not so good, um, it won't really be a good idea. So once you've gotten the right data source and you've actually proved that this problem actually affects a certain, a bigger percentage of people, then you can continue. If if you feel like it's only affecting one or two people or maybe 10, it's not really statistically, um, yeah, statistically, it's not, it's not really good enough for you to continue to build on it. So, um once you have already actually found out the problem and you've using your different data sources you've seen okay this thing actually affects a lot of people that's when you now sit and come up with different ideas so um you all know that one specific problem can be solved using different methods so if you ask people to um maybe build something maybe that for credit scoring algorithms, everyone would come up with different ideas. Um, everyone would come up with different ideas that um, that could solve that could potentially solve the problem. But out of those uh, out of those ten ideas that you've listed, this is how we can solve this. Um, something that's I'm thinking of an example. Uh, yeah, for example, if you think about, um, okay, this is not really fintech, but if you think about farming, um, so if you want to know maybe how the crops are doing, you can use either satellite data or you can use IoT devices that are put inside the ground or some IoT devices in pipes or even just physically other people. So those are different, three different ideas that you can use to solve one specific problem. Uh, but out of those three ideas, uh, which one, which idea is the best out of it? So after you've mapped out all the three, all the three or four, five ideas that you have on how to solve this specific problem, you can then prioritize which ideas to actually work on. And when you're prioritizing ideas, you can think of it in terms of um, how exactly is this technology or software? How exactly is it going to scale? Can it scale? Does it have the potential to scale? Number two, is it going to cost me more than, um, than actually what I'm just, is it going, which one exactly is going to cost more? And then, um, yeah, so different, and in terms of safety also, you're also thinking about um, 
yeah a lot of a lot of things depending on the, your ideas that you can think of and then you prioritize the ideas exactly so you prioritize and pick the ones that is more suitable in terms of cost in terms of safety in terms of its usability scalability and all those things and then after you prioritize the idea you kind of now develop a concept or a prototype so if it's if it's in terms of you could maybe build an algorithm or you could build a hardware or um anything really or just a software and then create an initial prototype that you know can solve this specific problem that you're experiencing once you develop it and give it a prototype try to get some new customers to come to it to use it one or two ask them feedback it's very good to always get feedback so sometimes i know we're all um software software people and tech techies uh, sometimes we tend to really live inside our laptops, our algorithms and everything. But if you don't go out to talk to your customers, um, are you really building something for your customers or are you just building something for yourself? So it's always good to get feedback from people, uh, from your customers specifically, ask them how they felt using a certain feature, ask them if there's anything, one or two things wrong, something that you can improve on and whatnot. After that, you then, um, from the feedback that you've gathered, you can then evaluate, uh, you can then evaluate your problem and then you can also keep refining it. Um, yeah, to just ensure that you, you building a product to be uh very well um so yeah that's all with like the ideation process like how exactly do you come up with an idea so some of the different characteristics that can make a good idea is number one like we mentioned it has to solve a problem otherwise it's not really it's not really a solution so if that if that problem doesn't really affect many people that is so if you feel like uh the number of hours that um an accountant is seated somewhere thinking about uh maybe uh balancing uh, i don't know ledgers or all those accountant sheets if you feel like it's taking them way too much time and you have a solution that could maybe make them do the same work efficiently in less than an hour or um, a few minutes then that you have already like made impact to um to your user or to your customer uh so that's on impact it should really have impact to the customer it's good it, and when I talk about impact is, does it save them time? Is it making the process more efficient, less tedious? And yeah, things like that. And then the other things is it should also be very sustainable. And when you talk about sustainability is if you look at in the next 10 years, um, is it really worth building something that you know in the next one or two years, it's going to just, it's going to end instead uh, if you look at sustain sustainability in the next 10 years will people come and build on top of this technology um is it going to scale is it going to be very sustainable in the next 10 years in terms of infrastructure that's necessary do we have the necessary infrastructure that could support um this idea and also your idea should like a really good idea should have the ability to scale in a way that uh, if this year you have impacted like 10,000 people, the next year is it going to impact like 20,000 more and the circle will just keep going and going. It's just like how um, this uh, social media platforms have, if you look at the different graphs that are being shown up there, you'll see that um, the graph is always rising, like the number of people who are buying uh, smartphones is always on the rise. And um, there are always many kids um, being born every year. So many people graduating after school every year, getting smartphones and all. So everyone is really kind of adopting into this um, smartphone era. So if you look at it in terms of skill, like 
this year could have been maybe a billion, next year could be maybe two billion. So will your idea be able to impact two billion and continues in the next um, few years? Um, so yeah, think about that when you're coming up with your idea. Um, so now, once you have an idea, so we have different frameworks that could help you. Um, sorry. Yeah, we have so many different frameworks that could help you when coming up with your idea. So one of the uh, most uh, mostly used frameworks is the design thinking framework. And this is a framework that comes specifically, it's, it's really rooted from the, it's like a methodology that kind of provides a solution based approach to solving problems. So it's very extremely useful to tackle complex problems um, because it really serves to understand the human needs more than anything. So it's very human centric in a way that it kind of employs empathy and um, yeah. So the basis of design thinking is how it's its ability to solve the human needs. Like what exactly are humans? What do humans need? What are they missing? What will help humans uh, benefit more? So it starts from that empathy. Um, and that's like the ability to, <clears throat> sorry, starts with that the empathy for you to um, notice a human need and have that um, desire to kind of solve that need that exists in the market or in the world. So it kind of starts with, yeah, so it starts with uh, empathy. So empathy is what defines the problem. So you've seen that human need that exists and then you have, you as a human, you have that empathy to kind of, um, to have that, you have that desire to solve that problem. So after, so it could be, um, you have noticed that maybe, uh, what, um, like the most basic thing could be maybe hunger or something, but uh, since I don't think that could be solved by Gen AI uh, or technology, um, it's just an equivalent. So that empathy to see how people are working too much, yet this technology can help um, reduce that, um, can help reduce that. Um, so basically, yeah, having that empathy for human human problems, that should kind of motivate you to define the problem that exists. So from that empathy, you kind of define the problem that exists. And once you define the problem, you kind of ideate and the ideation process is basically coming up with different ideas and then finding the perfect idea that works best in terms of cost, in, some, in terms of how safe is it, how good is it. Um, so then you once you you come up with that idea you define you create a prototype so a minimum viable product if i may say uh so it could be a software it could be an algorithm or anything and i know you guys have already built some of those um softwares which is very impressive so after you've created a prototype you then take it to humans or your customers who you know will be using this technology and you kind of um yeah humans who will be using this technology and you kind of give it to them to test it and then you need to use that feedback um you need to use that feedback to help you yeah you need to use that feedback to help you iterate your product more so it could be this feature button is not working well can we help it can we can we improve it in a way? Uh, yeah, so that's basically just one of the frameworks that exists with design thinking. Um, I, I've linked I've linked uh, yeah I've linked something there so you can go read more on design thinking. But it's basically 
um, something. It's basically just a framework to help you if you have an idea on how to restructure it properly to fit the human needs so you can create solutions that are helping the humans and not just creating a solution because you can or because you know um, or because how, you know how to code but can this code that I've created actually help people um, yeah so um, one of the things that we've mentioned is um, having having the right data source to understand the magnitude of the problem so your problem could only be um affecting like i said two or three people um or just a few people so is it does it make sense for you to go build a whole algorithm that's gonna maybe cost you so much money and then it ends up um helping just one or two people that doesn't make sense statistically so there are different ways um, in which you can get your data to prove that your actual your problem actually exists so and most of this data are always very um can i say they're always private data so if you go to a bank um they could have a problem but if you don't really work inside the bank you won't really understand the kind of problems they're facing so that won't really motivate you or spark that idea for you to go create a problem to go create a solution sorry um so it's very one of the good things is it's important for you to position yourselves in places where you feel you can make an impact so if it's a bank it's good for you to stay inside to uh, find yourself a spot inside the bank you could work there for a while and then you can start to notice the different problems that exist and possibly you can use your knowledge and your skills to kind of come up with a solution um, so the reason why I say most of these problems are seated inside banks or inside um, private companies that are collecting data or it, it could even be a, a supermarket or uh, any shop it just has a lot of data so if you have access to that that's good that could help you to actually um, define how much to define the problem that exists and to what magnitude so if you don't have access to those private data there are always public data that exists and this could be from the Ken government agencies so for example in Kenya we have the uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. I'm not sure in Ethiopia which uh, statistics agencies you have, but if you just go have a look and look, have a look at their data, see what exactly they have put private, you can kind of come up with um, certain solutions uh, that could help. And then we have other international organizations. So if you want to like scale your your if your problem skills to and um uh, yeah if it skills to maybe the whole african state uh there are always um organizations like who undp or imf they have their data online some of their data online uh that you can check out if you go to their websites you can find their private data portals and that that open public sorry that are uh public data and then we have the different research institutions again this are for kenya so i'm not sure in Niger, in ethiopia which which ones you have but uh we have research companies like dobag or ipsos or aphrc those are research institutions that have already collected this data from private institutions so if it's something on health they have already like this this are the number of people who suffered from maybe tuberculosis or this this is how the payments were made to this um to this hospital this month etc um so they might have that and then we ha also have some non-profits um institutions that kind of publicly give out their data so for example world economic forum amnesty and then also other open data portals like data.gov this is for the us 
this is for the Kenyan government, and then you also have the UK government, so they have their data open open for everyone. And then you also have the different social media platforms that you can get, for example, Twitter or Slack or news. Um, so yeah, these are the different data sources that uh, can help you get. So they're not really limited to this, but you can get more. You can get more data sources from wherever you look for, but it's always good to um, define your problem with statistics. Um, yeah. So since we are, since Kifia is for is a, you're learning on fintech. Um, I thought it would be nice to just look at the different technologies that exist in finance. So, um, for example, a credit scoring platform. Um, if you guys have heard of, uh, so yeah, the different companies that offer credit scoring platforms to the banks, or sometimes it's built in house by the banks themselves. So those are the uh, algorithms that could kind of help you know how much limits, how much loan limits can I give this person, uh, just based on the history of their transaction. So this is how much has been getting into their banks. This is how much has been living into their banks and yeah so you could use that data train it using a machine learning algorithm or whichever algorithm you use and then you get a credit score that you can give for a person and then we have retail solutions and this could be um different stores or yeah different stores that sell or and buy things so they sometimes have this, um, I don't know, POS uh, systems. Um, yeah, and then we have the e-commerce platforms. So online things like Amazon, things like Alibaba. Um, there's a lot of transactions that happen over there. Uh, so, so there's a lot of goods exchange, a lot of money exchange, a lot of money is flowing in the e-commerce platforms. And in Kenya, we have Jumia. I'm not sure in Ethiopia which one you guys have. Um, we also have supply chain finance. So these are the companies that um, manage the supply chain for, yeah, for different products. So it could be a um, distributor for maybe Coca-Cola or, uh, or even the, yeah, it could be Coca-Cola. So how exactly um, does it move from this one location, so it could be this one location to maybe 90 other locations inside in the country. So how exactly do the technology work uh, or the infrastructure, which, which, yeah, which infrastructure can actually support um, that supply chain for it to happen? And then we have digital payments. Uh, this is like M-Pesa, so you can send money. This is in Kenya again. So you can send money from one mobile phone to the other um yeah and then banking banking has a lot of other fintech um platforms uh and then also in insurance and micro insurance they also have a lot of um money flowing in and out um yeah so it's good for you to kind of understand the kind of technology so this technologies so it's this is just for you to kind of i know you already understand the technologies that exist in the finance industry but how exactly when you think about all a few of these ideas can you think about a way in which gen ai can help improve these technologies and in one way we're going to look at also the limitations that exist especially with using such kind of data um yeah so it could be um this kind of data is mostly ever private it contains a lot of private data from your customers you don't want to give out your data to anyone so how exactly can you work around that um it has a lot of history for transactions for different people which could be very private um so if you have access into one of this that's good if not um, I think you can get some, uh, 
yeah, you can maybe ask people who work in these companies, um, yeah, on the technology they use and all. So once you kind of understand all these technologies, um, how exactly do you think of any way that Genea can help to improve such? Um, so yeah. So there is, again, when we talk about Gen AI and FinTech, there is a fine line in deploying AI in FinTech. Uh, why? Because it requires 100% accuracy. And because you're dealing with very crucial data for people. So this could be uh, you're dealing with my money in my bank. So um, you, it has to be very accurate in a way that, um, so yeah, it has to be very accurate, number one. So you don't want to send out, um, you don't want to send, um, you don't want to give out like a wrong credit score for someone who you know cannot afford. So if you give someone maybe a um, million dollars or $10,000 that they feel, they have never had that amount of money before and the bank so it's from the bank so you you you're the owner of the algorithm for the bank so if you tell the bank give this person um one million dollars yet they have never seen that kind of money um chances are they might not use it well and the bank might end up uh going at a big loss so and also when you think about private data like you're handling people's um, cards uh, yeah credit cards which could be very it contains a lot of private data for people so it has to be really accurate when you're building it um, there's also so another thing is with gen AI in the fintech it should be less about consumer facing tools like scoring but also more of using banks existing big data to uh, make informed decisions uh, provide personal personalized client interaction and also automate the core banking processes um, so yeah with gen ai i think what has proven to work more is uh, not coming up with solutions that are for each and every individual in the company, but since it also requires a lot of data to train and kind of, um, yeah, to kind of train and maybe fine tune, it you can use a lot of um, the bank's data that exists for maybe the past 50 years or 100 years, and that could help you build um, models uh, to help make. Uh, to help make the better decisions and also the other thing with finance is it always has very strict regulation since it has personal customer data so the big question is how exactly can you apply generative ai for the least risk as you know sometimes it can hallucinate it can give uh, wrong answers but how exactly can you apply this gen ai with the least risk. Okay, so out of FinTech, let's talk about um, the different Gen AI use cases that exist. I know you know a lot of this. So it could be like chatbots that are on banking platforms or your banking apps. So you're talking to someone in the bank who's a, who's a chatbot. Um, that could be one of the use cases. So, and it could also be used um, if you know how maybe companies like um, companies with many um, with many customers or users. For example, um, I don't know which line you use, but in Kenya we use Safaricom. So, a company like Safaricom has uh, call centers with many, 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 many people. So. Do you think chatbots uh, can kind of come to replace that? 
Um, and then we also look at um, AI for generated personalized content for marketing. And then you're also looking at credit worthiness from data. This is just some of the examples that in which you can use Gen AI. Um, so in your case, what, what else do you think, um, how else do you think Gen AI can make a big difference in FinTech? Uh, so when it comes to, um, yeah. So when it comes to um, thinking again about um, if if what you created is actually um, if it makes impact. So as we mentioned earlier, we say that a good um, a good product or a good solution needs to solve a problem needs to have impact it needs to be very sustainable and it needs to also scale a lot so um when it comes to measuring impact how exactly do you define impact like how will i know that my thing has um made some impact so i know you could be thinking just um many people used it and they said it's okay that's one of the ways that you could measure impact but there are also some other things that you can measure so the whole point of impact just involves assessing the extent to which a project achieves its intended outcome so it could be i'm saving all these 300 employees in this bank i'm saving them time so it could be they used to do this job in 10 hours and now they can do it in one hour. So when you're defining your um, your project, your impact, you need to first of all list um, how exactly do I see myself impacting these people? Is it going to be time? Is it going to be um, money is it going to be um in terms of knowledge and skills am i going to help them grow uh in a way so those are the things that you need to define so let's say it's going to save time and money so you've defined your objectives and when um when you're defining objectives they have to be smart so um yeah they have to be smart so once you have defined your objectives, you identify the different KPIs. So for our case, it's time and money. So after that, you kind of give them the product, they test it out and then come back and get feedback. So how much time did they save you? How much money did you save using this product or this solution? And with that, you can be able to see was there an impact? So it could be positive, it could be negative. If it's negative, you need to go back to the drawing board again and see how exactly can I improve this? If it's positive, um, then you can improve. Now you've seen, okay, we've made impact. And um, I think it's one of the really great fulfilling uh, things when you actually see the impact you've made to people um yeah and then once you've measured impact you can now uh, send feedback to maybe your project had different people funding it and you can kind of um send feedback to them and who knows you might get more funding from improving uh yeah because they've seen impact and when there is impact then it has it has chance like likely more likely to uh to scale more and also um yeah to be very sustainable so if it has impact you're going to get more funding more more donors and it's also good to always monitor continuously monitor and evaluate your product or your project yeah so let's now get into details of what it means for your project to be sustainable and scalable so when you're thinking of sustainability the different factors to consider is financial viability so if for example 
um, the solution that you create. <clears throat> Sorry, the solution that you're creating, um, it costs more than the impact that has been made. That in the end, if it's if it's going to cost like maybe a million dollars to kind of um, to run every single year then it's going to be very costly. So in terms of, um, are you going to make more profits in the long run or are you just going to make, um, are you going to make losses, not losses, are you going to be, yeah, are you going to make losses from like operational costs? So if operational costs exceed the profits that you're making, is that really finite? Is that really sustainable in the long run? If you had maybe a certain, you had maybe ten thousand dollars in funding and you have yeah if you had ten thousand dollars in funding and every year you you're paying your employees you're, you're you're running more losses instead of making more money at the end of it all it's going to all the money is going to run out and your company will have to close um so it's important to also consider that your solution is can sustain itself financially and then also look at resource efficiency so it could be in terms of human resource it could be software it could be hardware in terms of the resources it needs um, is it efficient enough for it to run and make the company profits um, also when you're talking about the community engagement this means that the adoption has the adoption is getting high. So more, many, many people from the community that you developed a solution for are starting to use it. So if anyone hears, oh, there's this new app or this new thing that's being used and more people are using it, then chances are it may be very sustainable. And then also capacity building in terms of, um, can I train people or an organization on this technology that they can also train other people and kind of, uh, yeah, just to ensure sustainability, that transfer of knowledge. So initially it was just knowledge within you and the people in your company. Other people have no idea about the kind of technology or solution that you're offering. But the more you train more people in the industry that you created a solution for, the more, the more you're, the more it's going to be like very sustainable. And then also continuously monitoring and evaluating your product to ensure that it works um, well and people are satisfied, you've seen impact. That's on sustainability. So the, the project or your yeah it should sustain itself when we talk about skill your ability the ability for your product to skill factors to consider is can you replicate this so um can you replicate this platform into other places um so everyone can use it so it's not that someone can just um you have one central location and everyone has to tap into the central location to use it instead can this be distributed um i'm thinking of an example yeah can can it be distributed and so you know how like when more dis distributed systems tend to be tend to be more stronger because uh because then it's not running on just one resource instead it's running on many other resources that are easy to get for um for other places and yeah also when you have more partnerships and collaborations with different people that means that more people or more organizations are seeing the use and are seeing how good it is how good your platform is and now they want to partner and kind of resell your product or something that can kind of signify um, a potential for you to scale. And then you also look at the technology and innovation bit of it. Like I mentioned, um, many people are adopting to smartphones and laptop technology and all. So if someone created, um, 
So for example, you have the USSD and also the, um, yeah, the USSD and also like apps. So in terms of technology and innovation, which one works better for people? And if, if, your, if your project is not, it's, it's technology based, but um, not, there's not a lot of innovation going on there, then it's not going to be very sustainable. But if you look at, if you're innovating in, um, in the technology that's being adopted mostly by many people, so for example, Gen AI, smartphones, laptops, uh, all of those things that are really being adopted by many people, uh, then chances are your your solution will scale. Um, yeah, and also I also missed standardization. So standardization is uh, creating, yeah, so creating a very standardized product in a way that uh, no matter how many things are built on top of it or removed, you always have a very standardized um you always have a standardized product that you can always go back to look out for. Um, yeah, so I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to give this chance for anyone with a question. Anyone with a question? Okay, so let's look at this week's exercise. So for this week, you are, yeah, you are kind of, um, you're given, a, yeah, so the challenge is to come up with different ideas that you feel, uh, since you've already been introduced to the generic technology, you've already been introduced to some FinTech technologies, um, have you have you thought of like one or two ways that you feel this technology can be used to involve, to kind of um, improve certain operations or certain problems that exist? Um, if not, this is your chance to go do some research. I think it's a very interesting topic. And for all of those who have always aspired to be entrepreneurs, I think this would be a good document for you to come back to every time, whenever you need, you're going to do pitching, maybe to fundraise money, or you're going to talk to different venture capitals. Uh, how exactly would you phrase your idea to problem, impact, skill? Uh, this, this is a really good document. So uh, think about, any idea that you feel can be used in fintech um, to change the world. So yeah, we are all trying to make the world a better place and we kind of need new, uh, new and creative ideas to fix the problems that we face. So for this exercise, we want you to tell us how you will use Gen AI in the fintech industry to impact 5 million young people in Africa in the coming five years. So be very specific and describe how you will measure the impact of your idea. We've talked about how exactly do you measure impact. Um, so define your KPIs, exactly how, how exactly will you target to hit your KPIs and also the role that technology will play and where technology will play a role. So remember not everything needs to be solved by technology so it has to be very realistic uh yeah and then also remember that in the finance industry there are a lot of strict regulations due to customers data so um try to work under that so how will you apply solution with more impact but also less the least risk and then as always, just extend your answers into a PPT. And when you're writing your answers, you have some guidelines. So you're required to have like five or six slides. So for the first slide, you're going to describe the problem that you're facing. So, and illustrate at least using one data source, the scale of the problem, the magnitude of the problem. So this problem should affect at least 5 million people uh, globally. 
Uh, so mention if this issue is only occurring in your country or region. If yes, identify why. If no, um, identify other areas in the world where it's also occurring. And then uh, when you find your answer, ask yourself, can this problem be solved by Genera solutions? Because Genera is not going to solve everything. And then once you describe your problem in the first slide, the second slide will be how we, how would you solve this problem? So this is where the second slide you write now, your solution to the problem that you've mentioned before. And also think about realistic solutions that are currently being used and how Gen AI can be realistically implemented and then also just give a brief description of what technology will play a role in your proposed solution. And also, will it be sustainable, affordable, and applicable to all regions? Um, yeah, and then find past solutions to this problem and illustrate how your solution has improved the original or previous solution that is currently being used. Um, so in case you do not receive funding from your government, can you identify three funding sources who you can realistically approach to find your solution? Um, yeah, so this could be a family, a venture capital, a venture studio, um, uh, maybe a bank, anything. Um, so yeah, for this assignment to be very creative and create really good slides, uh, just, yeah, remember that, uh, yeah, create good slides and then use both images and words and just a few guidelines. And then, yeah, so you have a template here. Um, let me just share this slide. So yeah, you, you've been given a template that could kind of help you uh, draft your slides. So, um, so the first one is just the cover page, your name, title. The second one is the problem. The third is the solution. And then fourth is the technology's role. And then five, the improvements uh, from previous solutions and then your funding strategies. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. So that's all and then you have some links if you if you're if you want to learn more about design thinking um how to create storyboards this is not really a must if you know how to write presentations then that's enough um yeah and you have yeah that's all um do you guys have any other questions concerns or anything If not, we are right on time. Um, thank you guys for being here. I can't wait to read um, most of your ideas and solutions that you come up with. Interesting and also challenging. Um, okay, could you tell us why you think, would you like to speak? Um, challenging in what way? Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's also very interesting and also challenging. I feel like it's a bit hard to kind of figure out exactly what's going on and how exactly Gen AI can help. Um, but this should kind of push you to do more research go try and um, see what kind of solutions have been made. I can't speak, but starting from a problem until the funding is a good assignment. Yeah, um, but yeah, it makes sense. The, it's a bit challenging to come up with like a good idea that you feel can help. 
but also this will kind of push you to go do a lot of research and see exactly um, the kind of solutions people have made in the fintech industry, how they've made it. I think it's going to really inspire your learning in a way. So challenging in a good way, I hope. All right. Um, so thank you for being here and I wish you a very good evening and all the best. Can't wait to see your ideas. Great. Bye.